Hello again. Now we're going to start with the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, as we've learned before, was sent at about the same time as the prophet Haggai. This was during the time when the temple was being rebuilt, but at some point the rebuilding had stopped because there was opposition against the building of the temple and they had convinced the king of Persia to stop the building. But King Darius I, he restarted the rebuilding of the temple. He, he, he took away the order to stop building and allowed it again. It was during the second year of Darius that Zechariah began to prophesy. So this is when Darius in his second year re-allowed the building to, to continue. So Zechariah is there to encourage the temple builders. And this is during the time of Ezra, the book of Ezra, where there's great opposition from the Samaritans who are in the land who don't want to see Jerusalem rebuilt. And they're trying to use the they're, they're campaigning, lobbying the Persian government to stop the building. But the Jews are lobbying the Persian government to allow the building. Um, the, the Samaritans are claiming that the Jews are rebellious and they will rebel against Persia if you allow them to build this city and especially to build the city walls. And it was Nehemiah who was under the king Xerxes, the son of Darius, uh, where Nehemiah uh, was allowed by Xerxes to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. But it was during the time of Darius, which we're looking at now, where the temple is being rebuilt, but the city is in ruins. Okay, starting in Zechariah, I'll just go through it and as quickly as possible. Um, where's my notes? Now, Darius, first I'll talk a little bit about Darius. Did I start my timer? Yes, I did. Okay, first we'll talk a little bit about King Darius. He's a, a very um, famous king because uh, when Darius took over, he took over the Persian Empire, which was pretty much at its greatest extent. It, went, it included Egypt and all the way into um, part of where Afghanistan is and Iran and everything in between was all the Persian Empire. And so Darius, he, he set up a taxation system in Persia where he divided it into provinces. They were called satraps. And he made 20 provinces. And each satrap, each satrap was to pay a fixed amount of tax each year to the empire. And then the empire uh, would use these taxes to build walls, to build canals, and to build things which benefited all the people of the empire and, and benefited the empire itself. So this was sort of like, the, he was the first one to really start building this real huge government system. Uh, which was followed by every empire after that. The Greek empires, the Roman Empire, all followed this uh, government taxation system to benefit all the people of the empire. And before that, they were just ruled as slaves. Like by the Assyrians and Babylonians, they were just slaves. It was only the the people of the race of Assyria or the race of Babylon that were the 
the, the citizens, the rest of them were basically slaves. So now it's a, it, they're all becoming citizens. This is why the, the Cyrus was loved by the people he ruled over, because now they're all respected as citizens, and the empire is there to benefit everybody. And Darius took this to the next level. So he started this uh, provinces and satraps, and each satrap had a treasurer, a secretary, and a garrison commander, which were each appointed by Darius. So they were all ruled over by these three appointees who kind of kept each other in check, where Dar Darius would know what was going on with each of them, and nobody could really um, deceive him. And the common language of Persia was Aramaic. That was the language of the entire empire, and Old Persian was used in Persia. And um, the official Persian language, or the language of the government, was known as Aryan script. And Darius came out with the, 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 um, the, Dar the Darius coin, which was used e right up even until the Roman Empire. And it was a gold and silver coin of a certain weight used as currency through the entire empire. He also made uh, the royal road which um, extended from Persia all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. And he made um, an official post office system, which were all these stations along the roads, and each station was a mule's... The journey a mule, a mule could do in a day, they were that far apart, so that he could send messages through the empire and the message would travel by mule and each day a new mule would be carrying so that it was like the mule never stopped and um, that was his system of sending message to the satraps and it was used as a postal system uh, for different ways and he also uh, ruled over the Phoenician um, the Phoenicians, and he instituted like a commercial shipping sy system among the Phoenicians. Uh, he also instituted a banking system, uh, land taxes, which paid for irrigation, canals, way stations, different temples in the empire, it was under this system that the temple in Jerusalem was, was rebuilt. So that's an interesting thing about Darius. Um, his god was called Ahura Mazda, uh, Lord of Wisdom. And uh, the religion is Zoroasterism, which still exists in that area. Um, it's not a huge religion, but it does exist. Um, and that's the Achaemenid Empire. Okay, so now let's get into... That's who Darius was, okay? So we'll get into Zechariah a bit now. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berka, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, The Lord has been sore dis displeased with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will turn to you, says the Lord of hosts. Be not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but they did not hear, nor hearken to me, says the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, 
which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so has he dealt with us. So he's saying, see what happened to your fathers? Don't be like your fathers. Return to me and I will return to you. And then on the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month of Sabbat, in the second year of Darius, came to the word of the Lord to Zechariah, saying, I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind them there were red horses, speckled and white. Then I said, O my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show you what these are. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they who the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. So this is what horses are. In prophecy, they are influences that are sent by God through the earth. Okay? And... The angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which you have had indignation these 70 years? So that there tells us right now, it's been 70 years. So we talked before about the prophet Jeremiah who said uh, that, were in Jeremiah chapter 25 when he said that God had insti- had had prophesied that Jerusalem would be destroyed and lay waste for 70 years and then it would be rebuilt so here the angels saying it's been 70 years how long are you going to have indignation and the lord answered the angel that talked with me good words and comfortable words And the angel communed with me and said to me, Cry you, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great jealousy, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies, and my house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Cry yet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities, through prosperity, shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. So now God is proclaiming that Jerusalem shall be rebuilt. A line stretched forth like the stonemasons. They stretch out a string for a straight line to lay out the stones. Oh, so that's what he's saying. It's, and to get it level and straight, a line will be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Now, uh, we'll take a quick look at the color of these horses. The horses are red. Okay, the man on the red horse. Um, Red is a color of vengeance. If we look at Isaiah chapter 63, um, we look at the day of vengeance, where he's stained red with blood. Okay, and white is a symbol of peace. Um, righteousness so you'll find that in uh, Revelation chapter 6 the the four horsemen of Revelation we'll take a quick look here Revelation chapter 6 the first horse is white I saw an open When the lamb opened one of the seals I heard as it were the noise of thunder and one of the forces four beasts saying come and see and i saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given to him and and he went forth conquering and to conquer so that's the white horse of christianity right 
And then the second horse, the second seal, and I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went forth another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. You see, so the white horse was to bring peace to the earth, and then the red horse is to take peace from the earth, right? That they should kill another. And so if we see here, here's the red horse, the guy on a red horse, to take peace from the earth, and the horses with him were speckled and white so they were red and white so these four these these horses there's not four but it doesn't say how many horses but it says these horses that are going about um are are war and peace right and then they come back and report okay and the report is okay we have walked to and fro through the earth and all the earth sits still and is at rest. The earth is at peace. So this is during the days of Darius in his second year. So when Darius took the throne of Persia, there were some revolts that he had to quell in the north and in the east, but it didn't take him long. By his second year, he had quelled all the revolts and established himself as the sole king of Persia. And there was peace in Persia. So this is what it's talking about, is all the earth is quiet and in peace. And the angel saying, how long till you have mercy on Jerusalem? And God answers and says, I'm very jealous. Why is he jealous? I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great jealousy. He's jealous of the Persians because here Darius is calling himself king of kings and he's bringing peace to the whole earth. And this is what God wanted for Jerusalem to bring peace to the whole earth. And he's saying, well, he's jealous. But why does he? He's doing it when it should be Jerusalem doing it. You see, so this is why God is jealous. And he's saying, I'm sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Because I was a little displeased and they made it worse. So how did they make it worse? Well, I guess, first of all, Darius is probably a liar. And he's bringing all this peace as a king of kings, and he's a liar. So God's like, I'm, real, I'm even more pissed off than I was before, right? Uh, uh, against the Persians. They've made things worse, right? So, he's, so then God declares, a line will be stretched out on Jerusalem. This is not gonna happen, right? That Jerusalem is going to bring peace to the earth. So, this is where we're at, where we're starting with our Zechariah, right? Then, starting in verse 18, the next vision, okay? Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw four horns. And I said to the angel that talked with me, what are these? And he answered and said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters, and I said, what are these come to do? And he spoke, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man lifts his head, but these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. So the carpenters are coming to cut off the horns. So what is the horn? A horn is the power like when you look at a bull, he pushes with his horns, right? Or a ram, he pushes with his horns. So he's saying the power, these are like the armies, the power of these Gentile nations 
have scattered Jerusalem and Judah and Israel. These four horns. Now four doesn't necessarily mean that there are exactly four of them. Four kind of represents the four corners of the earth or the four directions. So it's just showing that all of these Gentile forces which have scattered Israel, their power is going to be cut off. Okay? And these are represented by Persia at this time. So Persia is like the Pharaoh of Egypt. Is The Persian king is the Pharaoh of Egypt. The king of Akkad and Sumer. The king of the four directions. The king of kings. All these powers are going to be cut off. Right? Okay. And then chapter 2. So in chapter 2, Zechariah will look and say, Okay, I lifted up my eyes again, and I looked, behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. And I said, Where do you go? And he said to me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth and the width and the length. And behold, the angel talked with me, went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. And he said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle in it. And I said, For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire around about and will be the glory in the midst of her. You know, we did our, our episode on the rebuilding of the temple and how in the book of Revelation... The temple is the people of God, and God is like a fire around the city to protect it. Okay. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, that is from Babylon, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Deliver yourself, O Zion, that dwells with the daughter of Babylon. Okay, what's the daughter of Babylon compared to Babylon itself? Well, the daughter, when you look at the family uh, structure in the Bible, the son would carry on the family name, but the daughter would carry on the family seed in other families. So the daughter would go out and marry another man and she would also make grandchildren to you but she was not carrying on your family name she was carrying on another family name but she was bringing your family influence to other families so this is like to bring uh, the law of Moses and, and the knowledge of God to other nations so these would be like the daughters of Zion, these other influences which are not actually Zion, but the daughter of Zion, the daughters. And the daughter of Babylon is like not actually Babylon, but the influence of Babylon in Assyria and in Persia. It's it's like these, these other religions, right? So this is what he means when he's talking about the daughter of Babylon. It's the influence of Babylon. And he also talks about the daughter of Zion, which is the influence of Zion. Uh, Zion itself, or Babylon itself, is the carrying on of Babylon and Zion itself is the carrying on of Zion but the daughters is the the influence in other parts of the world okay so so he's saying uh, leave come deliver yourself O Zion that dwells with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, 
After the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, says the Lord. And many, many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of you, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion, in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Okay, so um, Zion, he wants Zion, which is the son, to come out of the daughter of Babylon and come back to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem will have daughters all around in many nations in this great influence. And this is talking about Judaism, because he shall choose Judah. Judah is Zion, and Christianity is like the daughters of Zion. And, and you can think of it that way, but then there's, um, there's another thing to think about, where Christianity actually takes over the 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 I guess you would say the uh, the Zionist Christians are Zion, and then there's other Christians which are the daughters which um, support Christian Zion. Okay, so now we go into chapter three. How much time? Okay, I don't have much time left. I'm trying to keep in half-hour segments here. So, okay, I'm trying to keep things into half-hour segments here. So we're going to end this part here. And uh, in the next part, we'll carry on with Zechariah chapter 3. This starts to get very interesting. Because we see the uh, the Jews are in Babylon, and God is calling them, come out of there, come to Jerusalem, and we are going to make our own nation and our own influence in the earth. That's going to take over Persia and all of these things that have done all of this. We're going to do something even greater, and it's going to be under God. So, uh, if you like the video, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part where we'll look at Zechariah chapter 3.